In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a fairing, tank and seat hump for my RC374 Honda 6 replica. Starting with the tank, the first thing I had to do was cut out two pieces of aluminium sheet to make the base of the tank. With the two bottom plates trimmed to size, the next thing I do is weld up some sections to cover the central spine. Further sections are made in 1050 grade half hard aluminium sheet. I use 1.6 millimetres thick, which is just perfect and easy to form. I find it best to always start with the bottom of the tank, the bit that actually fits onto the bike. And once that fits nicely, you can make the top to make it look how you want it to look. I then fabricate a square sump that welds onto the bottom of the tank. This will fit down between the frame rails and ensure petrol flows to the carburetors under braking and acceleration. With the bottom of the tank basically complete, I make the top panel. I then make two baffle plates that fit inside the tank. These will prevent the top from dipping down if I lean on it and also stop the petrol from sloshing backwards and forwards under braking and acceleration. I then use my long spirit level to check that the top of the tank is flat. The top of the tank has a depression for a rubber chin pad, so I make up a wooden press tool and squeeze it together in my press to perform the depression. And here you can see the depression in the top of the tank and the side panels welded on. I do one last check to make sure the top part of the tank fits the bottom part perfectly and then trim any parts I need to before welding the two parts together. And here's the finished tank ready for trial fitting onto the bike. And it fits just perfect. I'm really pleased with that. So now it's all ready for paint. My friend Neil paints my bikes and he was able to match the red to an original RC petrol tank. When the red base coat was dry, we masked off the top silver stripes using my model maker's guidebook as a reference. With the tank finished, the next thing to do was to make the fairing. This was much more difficult and I had to make it from a flat sheet of aluminium into a compound curve. So to do this, you use a piece of wood that's been dished out and a bossing hammer. I didn't capture any video when I was making my RC374 fairing, so I thought I'd make a new one, but about half size just to show you the process I use. So I start with a flat sheet of aluminium that I cut out approximately two foot square and start hitting it with a bossing hammer and you keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and the dents get bigger and bigger and bigger and smoother and smoother and eventually it starts to dish out in the middle, but you have to persevere. You've got to keep going and have the vision of what you want to make. After about five minutes of bashing, I have a quick look at my reference book and then carry on. I've been bashing this sheet of aluminium for about half an hour now and it's starting to take shape. So the next thing I need to do is put in some datum lines on the inside. This will help me get it equal and even from left to right and top to bottom. With the datum cross marked, the next thing I do is mark out the bottom recess where the fairing is going to clear the mudguard. I do this freehand by eye using my model maker's guidebook as a reference. I then mark out the handlebar cutouts. These have to be the same each side. I use this model maker's guidebook. It's available online. It's really, really good and has lots of really good close-up pictures. The next thing I do is trim the fairing to size using my tin snips, following closely to the black line. I'm always under close supervision by Charlie Weaver. He sort of keeps an eye on me.
It's quite easy to cut a curved surface with a straight tin snips. You sort of twist them round as you're squeezing them together and you feel the metal curve round the bend. There we go, that's really taking shape now. With the fairing roughly trimmed to size, the next thing I want to do is use my bossing hammer and bend the bottom over all the way around to curl it underneath. So I go around the edge, hitting the edge as hard as I can to stretch the metal and make it curve around nicely like this. With the metal bending nicely, I turn the fairing over and tap it down so it's about 90 degrees roughly to the front. Then I will also be putting up a rolled edge to make it stronger. The aluminium sheet gradually gets harder and harder from all the hitting with a hammer. So to anneal it back to a soft state, I first scribble on the surface with my Sharpie pen and heat it up with my map gas blowtorch until the Sharpie pen disappears. This is at just the right temperature to anneal it. Then I let it cool down and then I can continue with my bossing hammer to get the shape just right. That's much better. Now when I'm using my hammer, the aluminium's moving and staying put. You can tell when it's getting too hard and springy because it bounces back. I draw in a second datum line around the top to ensure that both the cutouts are in the same position. And when I measure it with my rule, I notice they're slightly out, so I adjust them to size by trimming them with my tin snips. The upper fairing panel is really taking shape now, so the next thing I want to do is turn up a lip on the bottom edge. This will give it increased strength. I mark a line with my Sharpie pen so I can use my pliers to bend them up and then tap it through with my hammer. It's amazing, by turning up the edge, it makes it so much stiffer than it was before. And it also makes it easier to hold its shape. I glance at my model maker's guidebook, so the next thing I'm going to do is trim the top of the fairing to match. So using my Sharpie pen, I mark on the shapes to cut out. I mark out the shape by eye until it looks just about right. And in this picture, you can see the top part of the fairing loosely fitted onto the RC374 before I did the final cutting. And that looks just perfect. I'm really pleased with that. So now I can use my tin snips to trim it to size. With the fairing trimmed down, I now use my bossing hammer to go around and planish out some of the smaller marks. This could take quite a while. With the shape basically finished, I go around all the outside edges with a half round file to remove any burrs.
I now need to make and weld on some extensions where the screen fits to make it look in proportion. I clamp the extension piece in place with two toolmaker clamps then use my TIG welder to weld it together. With the welds complete, I use my flat file to dress them down. I then hammer down any high spots and go back over with the file until it's quite smooth. I then trim round the end with my tin snips to produce a radius. Then using my flat file, I dress the edges to make them all smooth. Charlie Weaver's been watching me do this and he feels like he can do a better job, so he has a go. But after just a few minutes, he has to have a tipple, so that's no good. The weather's looking really nice outside and Tracy's just made me a nice cup of tea so I thought I'd go up to my top shed, get out my angle grinder fitted with a fine flapper wheel and give the fairing a bit of a polish. I feel I'm being watched and I look up and the pigeon's looking down, probably saying I hope you're not going to make much noise, I'm trying to get some sleep up here in my nest. But anyway, I'll get on with the grinding and then a butterfly comes down and lands right next to me and starts flapping its wings and then just flies off. So I continue. After a few minutes with a fine flapper wheel, the fairing's starting to look really good, so I think I'm just about done here. And on the way back to the garage, I look in the kitchen window and Tracy's doing some cooking, so I go in to have a look to see what she's making. Well, the recipe book's not on the side, so she must be making cupcakes, because she knows how to make these off by heart. You basically have three of everything. Three bits of flour, three bits of butter, three bits of sugar, and three eggs. Put the whole lot into your food mixer and mix it up into a smooth paste. Then she adds a spoonful of vanilla essence to make them taste extra nice, followed by another mix up in the mixer. And then the most important bit, she adds the cherries. Quite a lot, a lot more than it actually says, because I like a cherry cupcake. With all the ingredients mixed, she uses a spoon to blob it out into cupcake cases, puts them into a baking tray, puts them in the oven for 20 minutes, and then gets them out and they're all cooked, ready to eat. But they're a bit hot, so you have to let them cool on the side for a while. I did manage to pinch one to take back out into the garage to cool down nicely in the cooler air. With the top part of the fairing complete, it's time to make the side panels. These are much easier to make. The top edge of the fairing side panels has a rolled over edge to make it safe so you don't cut your knees if you hit them. And also it looks good and feels nice as well. So what I do is get my Sharpie pen and mark a line all the way around the edge, about five or six millimeters in. Then I use my miniature handheld vise to grip the aluminium and bend it at about 90 degrees, as far around to the corner as I can get. When I get to the actual radius, I use a pair of pliers, just bend the metal over. It might look a bit rough, but it can all be cleaned up later with a hammer. I bend over the longer straight sections by gripping it in my vise and just bending it down. It's now time to start tapping over the edge using the hammer. You gradually go along, hitting it a little bit at a time until it folds over nicely. And after a while, you get a nicely formed rolled edge, which is really smooth to the touch. And to finish off, I use a block of aluminium with a smooth surface like an anvil. And this, this will produce a really smooth surface on the aluminium fairing. There we go. That's a really smooth surface now. Just perfect. With the left and right hand side panels cut and fitted to the bike, it's time to offer up the front top fairing, mitre them together and then weld them. 
I clamp the bits in place with my mole grips and then tack weld them on the bike, then remove the parts very carefully, take them to the bench and weld them all together. I then cut out and pop rivet in place little plates around the screw holes, these prevent fatigue cracking in the aluminium fairing. I also make all the aluminium screws from billet, I showed how this was done in the last video. I can now fit the fairing and the tank to the bike and check that it all lines up nicely. And it fits just perfect, I'm really pleased with that. So now I can remove the fairing and go around with my hammer and remove all the little tiny dents. This takes absolutely ages, but it's worth it in the end. I use a piece of wood to hold the fairing stiff while I'm doing it. This is the exact process that was carried out by the Japanese workers when they made the fairings for the RC series of race bikes in the 1960s. And here's an original picture from the Honda factory. The fairing is now complete and ready to be painted satin black on the inside and the graphics applied on the outside. The next thing to make is the hump for the rear seat. This is made out of one sheet of aluminium. The process is very similar to making the fairing. Basically I put the sheet of aluminium on my hollowed out piece of wood and start hitting it with a hammer, but this time I'm hitting it a lot harder because I need to make a tighter radius. I keep hammering in a circular motion until I can feel the aluminium sheet dishing out underneath. I don't worry about ripples at the edges for the moment because some of those will be tapped out and some of those will be removed with my tin snips. After about half an hour, it's really starting to take shape and I'm really pleased with that. And with a bit more hammering, you can really see the centre starting to bulge out now. And I'm not worried about these ripples at the edges because I'll be trimming those off shortly. Using tin snips, I now trim away some of the excess material. I'm now there for just the centre section. This is the part that will end up being the seat hump for my RC374. I continue to work the aluminium with my bossing hammer, gradually working around in circles to form the shape I'm looking for. The rear shape is starting to look really good now, so it's now time to trim it down to size. I'm really pleased with the actual shape and size of this seat hump. It's just about perfect and matches my model maker's guidebook just nicely. So now I use my bossing hammer to go around to remove some of the bigger dents. With all the major dents removed, I give it a little rub with some Abernet cloth to sort of highlight the high spots. And then I can use my ballpoint hammer on a flat piece of aluminium block to tap out the last remaining dents to get a nice smooth surface.
This last stage can take a long time, but it's very therapeutic to do. You keep seeing a dent and knocking it out, then another one appears, then another one, then another one, but eventually they're all gone and it's absolutely smooth. The last thing I do is use the flat side of my hammer to remove any ripples at the edges. And there it is, it's all finished, the outer shell of the hump. So this can now be welded onto the flat base and then fitted to the bike. And here's the finished seat, resting on the frame rails. I'm really pleased how it turned out. Well, it's getting late now. I'm gonna look outside and the hedgehogs seem really itchy tonight. They're having a good old scratch, walking around, in and out of the feeding stations. One goes across to the feeding station, but I think he thinks there's one inside. So he has a little look and he's a bit scared. So he runs off and then the other one comes roaring out and chases after him. And there's a right kerfuffle going on. But anyway, that's hedgehogs, what are they like? I hope you enjoyed the video and Trace has just brought me out a nice cup of tea and some cupcakes because they're all cooled down now. I'm just having one. They are so nice.